today. Intel Battlemage GPUs are shipping. AMD released three new CPUs out of nowhere. RX 8000 gets performance numbers, and Ryzen 9000 is absolutely insane. Intel's in huge trouble. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, I recently went over some benchmarks on Intel's next-gen GPUs, codenamed Battlemage. In it, they weren't exactly all that impressive, but at the same time, they were likely early engineering samples, so there's a lot of room for improvement. Well, it's looking like their next-gen parts are getting closer and closer to launch, as the well-known leaker Momomo underscore US recently tweeted a shipping manifest. And when we look at it, you can see it lists two different Battlemage GPUs, the Battlemage G21 and G21. G10. What's wild is that a roadmap leaked by Red Gaming Tech last year and it actually lists both the G10 and G21. From this, we can see that the G10 is the higher end version with the TDP below 225 watts, while the G21 pulls below 150 watts. So clearly, these still won't be competing with Nvidia or even AMD's highest end parts, unless they're the most efficient GPUs ever, of course, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Still, there's always room for competition in the mid range. Plus, let's be honest, that's what most gamers buy anyway. And according to this, the G10 would release first in Q2 of this year, with the G21 releasing shortly after. Intel may still be able to reach that deadline, but we shall see, especially given the fact that Nvidia should be releasing their next-gen 5000 series this year. Basically, Intel had better hurry up, or they could yet again be too late to the party. Now, if you don't want to wait for Intel to release their next-gen GPUs, you can always learn how to make your own hardware with this video sponsor. Brilliant! The only platform I trust to learn the deeper side of PC hardware, or really anything in the STEM field, because they teach me how I like to learn, with hands-on interactive puzzles that really let me get in there and visualize what the lesson is trying to teach me. They don't force me to memorize a bunch of formulas or listen to drawn-out boring lectures, and that's why I'm able to learn more complex topics like quantum computing or even how large language models work to power modern AI chatbots. Plus, they're always adding new courses and now's the best time to join Brilliant, because they're actually offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, or use the QR code on screen. And when you sign up at Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. This is one incredible deal. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, or use the QR code. Next up for today, AMD just released three new processors out of nowhere. These are the Ryzen 5 7235H, Ryzen 5 7235HS, and Ryzen 7 7435H. As you can tell by the names, they're part of the Rembrandt Zen 3 Plus line of APUs, which ultimately puts them within the 7035 series of APUs because they're based on that 6 nanometer Zen 3 Plus. But here, their integrated GPUs have been disabled, so they require a discrete card. When it comes to to specs, the Ryzen 5 models are actually identical. I'm thinking the name difference may just be marketing from this, or the HS model uses a configured lower TDP, but the regular H model can be configured down as well, so it really seems like they are identical. Either way, as you can see, they're both 4-core 8-thread CPUs with a base clock of 3.2 GHz and a boost of 4.2. The default TDP is 45 watts with memory support up to 64 gigabytes of dual-channel memory. Then the Ryzen 7 model is an 8-core 16-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.1 GHz and a boost of 4.5. The target market for these is likely mid-range gaming laptops and mini PCs, and it makes sense to introduce this without integrated graphics because most mini PCs that have discrete GPUs still have an iGPU, so this could help save costs for those scenarios. Next up, AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs are beginning to leak out with expected performance. This story originally comes from this leaker on Twitter, where he shared a bunch of emojis. Now, the part we're going to focus on is right down here. And this basically all means this. The highest-end RX 8000 GPU, Navi 48, is faster than the cut-down Navi 31 GPU, meaning the RX 7900 GRE. But it's slower than the top Navi 31 GPU, which is the 7900X. 
X-T-X. Now that may be disappointing, but don't forget that a while back some pretty big leaks came out claiming that AMD was going to focus on the mid-range with their next-gen GPUs. Think the RDNA 1 RX 5000 series as well as their 400 and 500 series GPUs. So this isn't too surprising for AMD. I really think the 4090 surprised the company with how fast it ended up being, and they're sort of sitting back and working on getting higher in GPUs for next time. That or they're just wanting to focus more on AI accelerators right now. Either way, it does sound like they have big plans for their 9000 series, but for now, it really doesn't look like AMD will be competing in the high end. Of course, with the fact that this Navi 48 GPU is more of a mid-range part, if it can do this well at a great price, it could still be a decent launch. Moving on, he also claims that the second Navi 44 chip is faster than the Navi 33 chip, think the 7600 XT, but it's at least a little slower than their 7700 XT. Once again, like I'm saying, I think price will ultimately be the deciding factor as to how well the 8000 series is received by gamers. If AMD can completely undercut Nvidia's price, they could have a winner, but if you're wanting the fastest GPU out there, you'll likely need to stick with Nvidia. And lastly for today, Ryzen 9000 looks to be a massive performance boost over current gen. This story originally comes from known leaker Kepler, who posted a pretty wild claim on Anatech's forum. According to him, core for core, Zen 5 is over 40% faster than Zen 4 in spec benchmark tests. Now, I'm not sure if he means IPC increase as some seem to be taking this, or just overall performance, which would include any clock increases. For reference, Ryzen 7000 had a geomean of 13% IPC over Zen 3, so 40% would be astronomical. In fact, it was the target IPC increase for first-gen Ryzen. Now, AMD actually overshot that to 52%, but remember, that first-gen Ryzen was enough to go from being a joke with Excavator to scaring the crap out of Intel. So Ryzen 9000 could completely decimate the competition, especially given for quite a while, it'll likely only be facing Intel's 14 gen, and we all know how disappointing that's been. Honestly, even if the 40% isn't just IPC and it includes clock changes, that's still a huge jump. With all of that said, this is still just one benchmark, so time will tell how much performance we see overall, but so far, next gen is looking really exciting. So while that does it for today, which Ryzen 9000 CPU are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!